Call the meeting to order and uh, pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Mr. Balacuella, not here. Uh, Mr. Vasquez, present. Mr. Guevara, present. Uh, Ms. Morano, here. Mr. Sepulveda, Mr. Romo, present. And Mr. Moya, here. Thank you. Uh, can we look at the minutes, please? Review them and we can approve them. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> okay, any communications or announcements? Yes, we have uh, an announcement that we have a groundbreaking okay. tomorrow, July the 12th at 10.30 at North Central Park. You're going to find the invitation in your uh, language. And uh, it's for uh, restrooms that they're going to get built at the park in two sites. And um, the groundbreaking is going to be in the intersection of International and Woodridge Drive, where the bottom of courts are. So if you can. Where's the, where, where's the invitation? It's in your. In your binder? And then you emailed it. I thought I saw it. Oh, you did email it. Okay, that's fine. We emailed it and uh, we gave uh, put a copy of this. Email. Perfect, yeah. That's fine. I'll look at it. It's at 1030, you said? Oh, it's yes, right here. Oh, under the, uh, oh thank you. You're and uh, we are going to have another groundbreaking, but it's, uh, we don't have the invitation yet, for uh, Sandra uh, Leidenbecker Dog Park. And you're going to be getting that by email. Okay. And that'll be this summer? It's going to be uh, in two weeks. Okay. Which date is that? It's this, the 21st. 20, the 21st. 20, the 21st? Saturday? <coughs> so Monday. The 20, no. I think it's the, the 20th, 20, which is uh, Friday. The 20th? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, <coughs> items for discussion with possible action. Okay, yes. so yeah, so the first is the Kaiser Memorial at, Bartner's, at Bartlett Soccer Complex. Mm -hmm. um, it's really kind of an update uh, on the status of that. I think we have some images. No, we... Oh, okay. Okay, so I think, does everybody have a copy of this? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just a bit of an update. So the project started summer, approximately summer of 2016 through Keep Laredo Beautiful. Uh, environmental, ser environmental Services in Vinnava. Um, the original design proposed a central walkway with a floor mural, uh, four benches surrounding garden and trees, and then recently a new proposal was presented for the installation of a metal arch that has the name of the memorial. Uh, I think you have an image of that as well somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, the, the walkway's been completed, the benches are there, the surrounding garden and trees are there, the arch has been constructed by uh, one of the uh, groups of uh, UISD, I guess, the, the groups of students who work with uh, metal and stuff like that. Um, Park Department has repaired and installed the irrigation system, uh, redesigned and constructed the walkway that was approved by Ms. Kaiser. Uh, the concrete slabs were poured as well for installation of four, are they granite or, they're four like stone benches, pretty heavy benches. And the uh, beds were filled with garden soil. Um, Tony Barrera from Yard Art donated the plants for those beds. And so there's a minor pending, one tree is pending like a, a bubbler. And so we'll be completing that here soon. Um, Metal arch, um, memorial name has following approximate dimensions, 12 feet high, 20 feet wide. Uh, the floor mural has not been established. Uh, that will be outsourced by Ms. Kaiser as well as a little extension she wanted to add to the walkway. Um, I guess I need to staff recommendations. Staff recommends approval of the installation of the constructed metal arch by UISD with the condition to be detachable since it's a flood plain or flood zone okay. area, mm -hmm. and we have that uh, water, that body of water nearby. Mm -hmm. um, staff recommends and agrees to complete minor installation of pending bubblers. Um, staff recommends strict adherence to the adopt -a spot rules and policies as set forth for the installation of the project. General maintenance will continue to be performed by Parks Department However, detailed ongoing maintenance specific to the project will be responsibility of the adopted spot applicant. Who is the applicant? That is uh, Martha Kaiser. Kaiser, yes. So what types of things would she do then? Um, that really has more to do with like the plantings and the, in the raised beds that were constructed. Um, mm -hmm. Any things that might need to be replaced or anything like that, that would be up to her like really. Like weeding or that um, would be the city? Um, weeding of the actual like designed area of the of the beds themselves we're thinking that should fall within the responsibility of the applicant i mean they're still going to go and do general maintenance uh mowing weeding around the trees around the the, the general site but i think the details of uh, of the plantings and stuff what are the ornamental aspects of it will that be spelled out for Ms. kaiser like you are responsible for weeding this you are responsible for painting this um, that is within the adopt a spot application. So that's why we're kind of saying that we, de we defer to what is laid out in the adopt a spot application. And then what if she doesn't do it? Um, well, I mean, I don't know if you may be happens? able to. We've uh, created this document because people have shown an interest. Mrs. Kaiser has come, well, came to us years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a memorial of her daughter. So she's been very involved mm -hmm. in the entire project, and so don't feel that that is ever going to be an issue with this project. However, the contract does allow for if a person does not fulfill, then the contract is is therefore uh, terminated. So I'm know. just wondering, you know, at a certain point, when people get older, people move away, people can't do what they have originally intended to do. So it's not like a year, like you've adopted the spot for 10 years, you're responsible oh, no, for no. it, no. and then the city will take it over. It's just kind of the city will take it over when the city feels that they need to take it over. Yes, the adopt a spot, adopt a park concept came about, well, it's been in existence for some time. It used to always be an adopt a park. And so a few years ago, um, uh, it was more or less dormant you know, the, the concept, and we had here and there uh, adopt a park um, policy, and uh, very lengthy documents, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so we revisited again uh, about a year and a half ago and worked on two different concepts, uh, looking at other cities, how they were handling it, uh, because you have your adopt a, a spot. Uh, for the highway systems mm -hmm. and you know that for like every mile you'll see little mm -hmm. signs the spot is adopted for and they clean the air the sides of the roads and stuff and park systems have them too 
And so we looked at other cities, how they were doing it, and they didn't have only an adoptive park, they had an adoptive spot. And this um, is, is indeed a, a great assistance to us because we have people coming in wanting to put <coughs> a mural, mm -hmm. wanting to plant a tree, wanting to put a muro, like a big sign. <coughs> <coughs> and so the adopt a spot came in very handy for us. It identified a, a method that we could use mm -hmm. to have somebody come in and literally they're going to put this, the contract is very specific with regard to what it is they're going to do, when they're going to do it, and what parks has to do mm -hmm. with, um, it, with assistance. And so pretty much when somebody comes in and adopts a spot, they are covering the cost of, we had <coughs> a, um, a wall, uh, in Spanish it's called a muro, mm -hmm. uh, but in, it, it's not a mural, it, it's a wall. Mm -hmm. that is um, uh, showing of, of love, of caring, you know, and, and What's uh, on it's the at wall? North Central Park. Yeah. So as you but walk it's not into, a mural. It's, it's not, not, it's called a muro in yeah. Spanish, and because we were dealing with people who uh, wanted to, to complete this project, and the whole conversation was in Spanish, and they kept on saying, es un muro, es un muro. And I thought, until they showed me the picture, I said, oh, that's not a mural, that's, that's a wall, you know. Well, it's a wall with, uh, with like, a, a plaque on it and an image. And it's the, in, the it's idea is that you stand in front of it and it kind of gives you directions, like, face the person that you're with, say these words, um, hug oh, them. It's it. kind of like yeah, this gesture it. of, mm -hmm. uh, of affection. Yeah. Right. And there's a little it's bench. It's actually a word for that specifically in Spanish. Well, muro, I think it does translate to mural, but it's not a no. mural in the sense that you might think that it's a painted. Right. Uh, okay. In Spanish, it's muran. Muran, oh, also. Mm -hmm. it it's, it's, it's written the same, but it's called muran, the mural. Okay. So it's, oh. that's a painting. It's like an enlarged plaque, if you will, um, in a sense. Let me see if there's like a. So this is actually an adopted park. Uh, adoptive spot. What uh, the Kaiser uh, Memorial Garden is, it's an adoptive spot. Okay. And so, that's motion to accept. Do we need, yeah, do we need to vote on it or do we, is it already? I think what we're really looking at today is the metal arch. Uh, most okay. of the, the other stuff has already happened mm -hmm. and uh, is that something that you're okay with? Motion to accept. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Romo and a second by Monica. Monica. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> okay, number two to standardize um, scheme color of fields, facilities, and amenities. Staff is still working on this. Uh, since our last meeting, I know we've had a lot of things going right. on. And this is something that is going to add some permanency to, and so we wanted to make sure that we addressed uh, all the issues, because I know that we had talked about it, it's mm -hmm. the school, it's next to the school, and is this what we want to do? So we wanted to kind of provide more research into this project to find out what are other parks doing in other cities, you know, instead of just creating something uh, drastic on our own mm -hmm. and then come back and have to change it. And so we, we'd like uh, the opportunity to, to, to fully research the the process of actually creating uniformity in the park system, especially since some of them have already adopted colors. Um, I think it was mentioned last time specifically for baseball fields, they use the green. Mm -hmm. So I was paying more attention as I was driving around the radio, and I really do like the green. It kind of I think the green is it makes it's very standard. Right. I was just in Austin this pretty, weekend. Like, mm -hmm. Every park was We might not green. have grass, but we have some greenery right. painted yeah. on. And mm -hmm. so <laughs> I think the green looks yeah, well really that's, nice. Yeah, that's in any baseball field. Yeah, standard. right. It's so you can actually see the ball. It's the walls. <laughs> like it's that. the back. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that we were talking about on hand field primarily. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's to me, that is personally, um, it's just not as pretty as it could be. So, but that, I mean, I know it's a personal taste, but then I was thinking, you know, you, I think it was you that mentioned baseball fields are typically green. Yeah. Well, and then I was me thinking and about that. Couple of those, well, so. everyone else who knows yeah. baseball except <laughs> 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 Everyone else at this meeting. Um, yeah, but I thought, I, yeah, I was just paying attention. I do think the green looks really nice. And then I was thinking, 
a palette. I don't know if other cities, maybe they don't do one color, but maybe they have a palette, like five colors, and then they kind of choose, and so everything might be different, but it all falls within like, a palette of colors that goes together. Well, there's certain colors that you need on a field. You have the, the green, of course, uh, and then you have the contrasting, the foul line, which is yellow. Mm -hmm. And so you'll typically see the yellow on the top of, of the fences, mm -hmm. you know, at a certain point. And then, of course, the fence, the contrasting would be the green because of parks. And so, <coughs> you know, those colors are definitely going to be incorporated. Uh, but we'd like to provide more information on that. So, yeah. Thank you. And the next item that I provided for you, uh, I know it's in your... In, in one of your tabs, but what I did is I also incorporated the new ordinance, and the new ordinance was for those committees that did not have the um, section included in your um, uh, ordinance to create a committee. In the Parks Committee, we do have it listed in the ordinance itself, it's section 2316. Uh, it's in your binder, I also printed out a copy for you. But as I said, I also included ordinance 2018-0050. And the reason I did is because what we're doing now is we're actually following a little bit of both. We are at, we're following the original ordinance which spoke to the absences, attendance, and what the uh, role is of the committee. It also speaks, the new ordinance speaks to the uh, requirement to have the uh, committee's uh, broadcast. Mm. Date. And so that's not mentioned in the original ordinance, but it is mentioned in the, uh, the new ordinance that was adopted in 2018. Okay. So I incorporated both so that you would have those. <coughs> so question has been if someone fails to attend three meetings, three consecutive <coughs> meetings, then they forfeit their appointment, but what exactly does that look like? I mean, is it just that it's a vacancy now and they no longer get invitations to the committee meetings, they no longer, um, and the council member is just told you now have a vacancy? And like, how does that, like, how does it fail? Yeah. Because um, I see here part three, F, no, G part three, a Parks and Leisure Service Board member shall forfeit appointment if he or she shall, part three, <coughs> fails to attend three consecutive regular meetings of the Park and Leisure Service Board without being excused by the board. The, each, each department is required, of course, to keep um, attendance records, logs. Mm -hmm as well as the minutes of all the meetings that have been, um, that have, that have been taken on the case. And um, the city secretary's office requires a report every quarter, and so the city secretary's office would have that information, and so they would advise the city manager's office uh, <coughs> and the council as an advisory to the city manager's office, but they would advise council that your particular board member has not attended, has not been there for six months, has mm -hmm. not been, you know, whatever the case may be. And so then you would uh, speak with the city uh, secretary at that point. Because <coughs> that kind of puts us back to where we were in the beginning. So for example, um, I think folks, committee members are being excused if they said ahead of time I'm not going to be able to attend the meeting they were being marked as excused because mm -hmm. they gave notice in advance. Um, personally, I don't think that counts as an excused absence because, I mean, if somebody just keeps saying, no, I can't go, I can't go, I can't go, they're still not fulfilling their purpose as a committee member. They're not able to attend. Um, And I think that wasn't something that was spelled out necessarily in the ordinance. It was just something that was being done for this specific committee. The, uh, the original. From reading it, 
it really doesn't state, it doesn't give you a time frame. I mean, it just says that the person does not commit, I mean, they they don't, uh, are up to par with, with keeping, you know, meetings and stuff like that. But I don't know if we can hold them accountable in that sense <coughs> to where we can say, well, you've missed so many meetings, you're out. Because it doesn't, it doesn't specify here. Actually, when I started, we commented that the original ordinance mm -hmm. uh, spelled out the creation of a parks committee meeting. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, for those committees that were created after and they didn't weren't spelled out in mm -hmm. the original ordinance of the department, right. then this ordinance was created. This ordinance addresses exactly what you were just talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. This ordinance, uh, 2018, <coughs> states that the uh, failure to attend three meetings in one calendar okay. year, irrespective of whether set absences are excused and excused, consecutive or non-consecutive. Mm. Okay. And so what we're doing... Where's the person? Okay. <laughs> third page? Yeah. It's third on page. the third, third page. Top. <laughs> okay. Third I sentence. Okay. And so this is what we're going by now. This is the portion that's where I was saying that we're kind of following both. Okay. Because this was the creation and this is the... the um, the duties and uh, responsibilities of the board of the committee and then this is the part where it talks it speaks to the uh, life the um, I'm sorry the taking of the board committee meetings and then it deals with the absences as well okay so now the committee or Parks Department you guys give a report to City Secretary every six months every year I want to say Lori is the one that normally handles that I want to say it's every quarter Every quarter. Is that correct? I believe that's what she had mentioned when we were work, we were trying to work it work out. Okay. So then, but if you guys notice somebody has missed three meetings, then you would immediately notify city secretary, or city secretary is supposed to be keeping track then of how many meetings people have missed. City secretary's office should be the one to advise the council members. Okay. And so. The liaison is the one that will take these minutes and just provide to the city secretary's office the uh, information, the data okay. with regard to attendance. And then the city secretary's office would uh, advise the council member. Okay. Now I know here it says that the liaison would advise the council member immediately upon their absences, but you guys would go to the city secretary. Right. Who, who makes the decision? Well, it's spelled out in the ordinance. Right. And so there is no decision, right? I mean, it's if they miss three meetings, that's it. It's, it's so if you miss three meetings, that's it. <coughs> in a calendar Don't even come back. In a calendar year. Consecutive. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not consecutive. Not anymore. No, it, it doesn't say consecutive. It doesn't say... It's just consecutive. Three meetings. <laughs> in one calendar year. It's consecutive or not consecutive. Yeah. Right. And, you know, uh, now these are meetings that are scheduled. Now, we may have situations like uh, Christmas. Right. Where, you, so you think about it, once a, once a, a month. Mm -hmm. So that's 12 meetings. Think about it, Christmas will come about. We've historically not scheduled mm -hmm. uh, a meeting in December right. because we've got people who won't come. We won't get a quorum. And so now you're down to 11 meetings. So you've got 11 meetings. Mm -hmm. And so you missed three, you've attended eight. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's other months that, you know, maybe January that we probably, you know, just depending, or Thanksgiving, maybe Thanksgiving in January or Thanksgiving in December. So there's been months where we have held off doing a meeting simply because of the year and right. the events that are going on at that time. So you're looking at, at 12 meetings you start, you may not be able to get a quorum for one or two of those months. So you're looking at 10 meetings, you miss three, you're mm -hmm. attending seven. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and that's fine. I mean, I, I know there has to be rules and policies and stuff like that. My only concern is who's going to make the decision and who's, how are you going to notify the, the person? You know, you know what? You've been absent three times. We will be working with the city secretary's office because okay. the city secretary's office is charged with the committees as a whole okay. to ensure that they're following the and the ordinances right. and that the uh, reports are going to because we send the reports to the uh, city secretary's office. Okay. And so 
what, what about if the council plan? member says, no, I don't want, uh, I want the person to stay there? Council voted on this, though. I mean, council agreed. No, I do I, 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 I really foresee that because you're going to have some council members that are going to say, hey, mm -hmm. I didn't vote on that. They have to follow ordinance. But I think they can go through a reappointment. It doesn't, that, I, I don't that, see that it's that, it's, that, it's kind of broad. I mean, if you really right. look at it, 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 there's a lot of loopholes in there. It's interesting. I mean, I guess That's, maybe they could reappoint, but. It doesn't speak to not being eligible to be reappointed. Exactly. I mean, I kind of no, we feel could, like no, council did so this. They'll put the same person again. Because it is really awkward. You know, oh, absolutely. They appoint somebody, that person yeah. doesn't attend. They don't want to be the bad guys. Right. So then they can say, sorry, you know, there's this ordinance. Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry. I yeah. mean, I guess. And a lot of times the person may be missing not only because they don't want to, but they have other meetings or, yeah. like, for instance, myself, and I'm speaking for myself, I mean, I've been, last time I didn't come because I was at a conference. Mm -hmm. And in September, I'm going to another conference. Unfortunately, the meeting is in the first or the second Wednesday of the month. <coughs> and that's when my conferences are mostly held. Mm -hmm. Or the, that week. So that's going to kick me out. So I might as well resign. Not necessarily because yeah. it's in one calendar year. Yes, but I still have, like, I have a conference in September, and then I have another one in uh, November. And that's so job related. You can't yes, miss it's, it. It's, yeah. And we may not have a meeting in November because of Thanksgiving. It just depends. And so if we have a quorum, so that there's a lot of factors that come into play. I mean, I just don't want for anyone in here to think that I'm missing because I don't want to be here. It's just it conflicts with my work schedule. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's it's. I, I mean, I agree in punctuality and I agree on, you know, being there, but there's a lot of different factors that, that you have to look at when that comes into play, especially with with absences and, and uh, attendance because this is on a voluntary basis. On a voluntary. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I take it very, very serious, I really do. But at the same time, you need to understand that, that some people have other priorities, you know, like her job. I mean, it, it's a no-brainer. What is she going to do? Well, i got to go to my job. I'm not going to, you know. Well, then in that case, you tell the council member, well, we don't need her there because she's never there. He says, well, that's the person I want. So what are you going to do? You know, I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate because it's going to come up. Well, I mean, like tonight, you guys were waiting for me to start because I was the quorum. Right. And if I, I mean, it's like some, we, we've had quorum. Right. But it's been barely. Right. So, I mean, we've some made people have the, time to start all our some meetings, people don't. But, yeah. I mean, uh, it just comes down to personal I mean, schedule. I we missed one meeting. In the past, mm -hmm. whatever, the past, whatever meetings we've had, I mm -hmm. think all of them have made. Mm -hmm. We haven't had to cancel the meeting because of lack of quorum. Exactly. I don't think. Yeah. I, I, I can't remember one. I like the process that, that uh, Gloria and you staff uh, take upon calling us, you know, even if it's a week before, mm -hmm. or two yeah, weeks. Exactly. Uh, we already know the date and, and, mm -hmm. and we are confirming. The moment we are confirming as to, per se, for the example, Mr. Hoya, we're already aware that she's not going to be here in September. We're not going to, you know, we'd be already aware that she won't be here in November. So then we'd have to find an alternative quorum without having to go through the process of, no, then we can't make it anymore. No, you know, then it'd be upon us to have to say, hey, then we, you know, we come in as a quorum, you know, other five members of us or six members. And that's, that's where we really, I mean, we're, we're committed to serving, and giving the time that we have. And, you know, and I think by all means, uh, if we can, if there's days that we can't make it, then um, we ought to be, as an example, we ought to, you know, she's letting us ahead of time, we ought to be able to make that excuse, you know, hey, motion to excuse or, or you know, without having to um, jeopardize her position in the committee. So, if that's... But if somebody mm -hmm. doesn't have the time to serve, then they just don't have the time to serve. 
Well, to what I mean, because we, we, has this been an issue before? Have you all? It has been an issue for Parks Committee. Parks Committee can, can now has been meeting regularly. When, but when someone has two absences, can there not be like a communication towards that person saying, "Hey, you got two, and we're this is what the policy is." And maybe then at some point, if three, four are met, then the board can decide and vote on whether they would like the council member to uh, find somebody else. I mean, is that complicated or that can't work that way? I don't know if we have that power to I do that. I mean, it's that. the ordinance, it's clear. I think the loophole you brought up of having someone reappointed, okay, well, that, <coughs> if it's not addressed, then that's a possibility. Right. Right. They'll find their way. Right. I mean, if a council member really feels very strongly about that, <coughs> how, how many meetings have not made a form? That's what I want to know. Recently, and not since recently. we, yeah. uh, I guess almost for the last eleven months, mm -hmm. I want to say that we've made all meetings. I, I don't remember canceling one of them because of lack of quorum. No. Right. No, I think we've had meetings. We've yeah. had like, we've for had example, right now we don't have four members, <coughs> right? Right. And Did one hasn't mean? been appointed for a long time. I mean, who's missing? Who's has not? Uh, uh, district one. District one. I mean, I think quorum is like the bare minimum. I mean, people are on this committee because they have opinions and voices, and right. they're supposed to represent their council members' voice. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, making quorum is like the bare minimum. Right. I mean, we're missing, you know, all the different opinions of people who can't come. Even mm -hmm. though we're here, we're still missing out on those voices. Right. right. I, just, I, I just think that, that, and I go back to, to your case, I, I just think, and in that case, I, I it's just, to me, it's not fair to the individual that, that actually wants to be here but can't because of the job. I, I, because I've been in that situation, you know, where I can't make it because I have a, I was coaching or something, whatever, whatever the reason. And I just think that that's, it's not fair to the person because, not because they don't want to be here, it's, it's, it's I mean, it's a no-brainer. I want to keep my job too. I don't want to lose my job. But then again, it's a privilege to be on this committee. We know. can change the date. I mean, we chose the second Wednesday of the month after consulting with everyone who was here. Right. And everyone was, that was here was like, well, okay, I think that yeah. date would work. You're always going to have So I mean, we, can, we can look at another date. Yeah. Uh, my, only, my only preference would be to be consistent, like the third Tuesday of the month or the fourth Thursday or, you know, whatever it is. But, right. I mean... The second Wednesday of the month. No, I'm not asking to change choice. the date. The, the date can stay the same because when we first, uh, when it was first discussed on the date, it worked mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. But then conferences are like, I mean, you just never know when the mm -hmm. organization or the association <coughs> will be scheduling those conferences. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, let's just play it by year. And if I know that I'm going to be out three, you know what? I might as well resign. No. Well, I mean, I think we'll address it when we get to that point. Yeah, yeah I believe it's, it's not an issue yet. Yeah, these right. are things we can present to the but secretary and see what what can be brought up or addressed and rediscussed. Okay. So that was the committee attendance policy. So we're gonna table that or what do we do we but there's nothing for us to do okay. it's an ordinance okay. and I wanted to know what the ordinance was right mm -hmm. so now we all know what the ordinance <coughs> is that was it I just wanted because it was we were going back and forth on what was actually the policy and so right. I, I asked for clarification on that so that's it <coughs> all right and then community <coughs> field update uh, there was the uh, issue with the signs to prohibit adults on film, and uh, we do have some uh, images of the signs that we placed. Uh, can you put it on that? Is it this slide? Yes. Sorry. Can you put the one further? 
Uh -huh. yeah. okay. Those ones, those are the ones that we've placed when we're uh, doing maintenance on the fields. And uh, we have some that says no pets allowed. And uh, that's uh, how we uh, try to keep people out of the fields when <coughs> we're working on them. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And uh, the there was another issue for the high fence that they were requesting. Right. And uh, we already have a quote for that, and we're inputting it in the system. To uh, we have we uh, raised the funds, not raised the funds. We found the funds funds in <coughs> our accounts, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and do it. That one in the community fields, and um, we have a pre presentation for uh, the construction projects. Okay. Um, we can go to the first. The first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, here is in Las Brisas Park. Uh, we uh, are doing a walkway, and uh, we already uh, eighty percent done there. And uh, it's gonna allow the uh, community to uh, work out there, walking around the park. And uh, we demolished. Um, it has in the middle a playground, and it had a round uh, sidewalk, so it was already deteriorated. We removed it, and we're going to do a new one, uh, nice. wider. Very and, wide. And um, we're working on that. Yeah. And we had mentioned that there's uh, going to be a replacement of the playground because it's in bad conditions. And uh, but we still don't have a date of the installation, but it's going to happen. Which park is this? Las Brisas, by International. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're working on the, the Lazy River, the uh, Cigarrapu. Uh, we're building a retaining wall and a chimney and, uh, and a pavilion for uh, future usage there for the people. And uh, you can see in the uh, <coughs> interior corner, they're raising already the, um, they're gonna put a, a slide for the Lazy River, so they're already building it. So. Yeah. So we're that's mm -hmm. and uh, outside we put two uh, additional shades uh, on the picnic tables. We only had one, uh, and we complemented the other two. And um, <coughs> I remember one attempt. Oh yeah, just the the Canseco fence is finally up, which is one of the elements we've been waiting for to yes, begin sorry. programming and educational. Um, stuff that we're going to be doing with the community. Fall is around the corner. We're already starting to get some of the volunteer mm -hmm. uh, core members from Hillside and uh, Canseco to, uh, to get involved. And yeah, now that the fence is up, uh, I've been uh, speaking with the councilman, Perez, and we'll be starting to uh, put some information out on, on how the community can get involved and learn and hopefully learn something from there that they can used to exercise the the new um, urban ag ordinance that we also have in the city and then on the bottom that's just a community development uh, project at slaughter park where we're doing a uh, native plant uh, pollinator garden so that, i mean there's not we already started planting you don't see that here that's the drip irrigation and stuff installed but uh, by the end by the end of next week that'll be completed we have all the plants that we order from specialized nurseries in Austin, Texas that are uh, native plants for pollinators. I have a question mm -hmm. about the Lazy River. Is there going to be shade for the Lazy River or it's all open? Well, the, uh, sure the, all open. well we're going to have the pavilion, we're going to have a little okay. shade. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but no shade over any of the water? Not over the uh, pools. Mm -hmm. But I do believe um, Aquatics has bought some of the umbrellas to place uh, around the area. Historically, we'll do that. Uh, we come in later, and it's not part of the original contract, but mm -hmm. we will retrofit something that we determine uh, it, it's okay. a necessity. It's a huge necessity, and so so you that. so you could and or you will add shape later, possibly. I mean, on based on the need. The need. <coughs> okay. And here it's a, 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 a basketball court. We're putting a metal shade, and that's the progress that we are um, right now. It's going really well. And 
on the bottom, you can see the uh, foundation for the basketball court that we're doing in Bartlett Soccer Complex. Um, we already, I passed uh, today, and they already have the uh, basketball um, post and rings, mm -hmm. but um, they're pending the concrete pouring. But it's, it's ongoing. Uh, there has been maintenance on the slaughter trails and at North Central Park. You can see the there has been some cleaning. Uh, they have been removing some of the trees that are falling down. Uh, we're working on the maintenance of the baseball fields that we're having uh, on upcoming tournaments. And uh, we have um, all the maintenance crew very busy right now in all those fields. Oh, those are the signs that we put. And uh, we had the Parks and Recreation Month proclamation. And uh, the De Colotes de los Dos Laredos 4th of July celebration with uh, some cookouts that was there. And 4th uh, of July extravaganza at uh, Independence, Independence Hills, right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you would like to, because... Okay, um, we touched base on the, we went from construction to uh, yes, everything. Uh, uh -huh. That's okay, that's okay, more pictures the better. <laughs> we're all good, we just want to share with you what yeah. we're doing at the department, mm -hmm. so... Um, we had, we started with the Parks uh, Month Proclamation. Um, can I go back? Can you go to the other one? To the other we can always slip to this one also. Okay. Because we have some similar pictures, but we also touch on other ones. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our fishing derby, and I think we may have shared that with you last time. We just, mm -hmm. we had a couple of events after we had this meeting. Uh, okay. This is one of our movies in the park. Uh, in addition to what we passed out, I s gave you a calendar with all the movies in the park. July is July 4th month, uh, I'm sorry, July month for the National Recreation and Parks Association. And we celebrate with cities and states across the entire United States about the importance of recreating outside, knowing your parks, and being with your family. This is one of our movies in the park, Concord Hills. So uh, these are a lot of fun. This is the proclamation that we discussed. The lifetime of discovery. Basically what we're trying to do again mm -hmm. is, like I mentioned in the right. interview, get people outside. Be with your kids, right. be with your friends, be with your family, and just enjoy. As you had mentioned, uh, I heard you, <coughs> Slaughter being the largest park in the South. Mm -hmm. Our parks are growing, we're doing regional parks now, and um, they're growing. They're going to surprise you if you've never been. If you've never been to Slaughter, hit Slaughter. It, it, the first time I, and it, it's close to my house, and so the first time I saw it, I thought, oh my gosh! Especially I'm on the walking trail, and it's got a, a beautiful canopy as you're doing the trail, and you can either do the concrete or you can do the crushed um, granite, and so just depends on what your preference is. And I was thinking. Oh, good Lord, where am I? It's a horrible <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> but, you know, I'm used to the pocket parks. You know, for years we were doing pocket parks. That's all we had. And so now that I'm seeing the growth, it's, I'm amazed. So I can only imagine people who are yeah. aware of. Are the parks stuff. growing because people are donating more land? The city's not buying land to increase the size of the no, parks. No, the parks are growing because that was what the design <coughs> was, uh, what, that was requested. Uh, the evolutionary process, I guess, of creating parks. At one time, the thought process of the community was, I want a pocket next to my house. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to have, I want to build a community, you know, I'm going to develop a community, and I want my kids to be able to go down the street to get on the swings or play basketball or what have you. That concept has changed. Um, society has, has evolved, and so now, and I love the concept because what's happening is you have your families getting outside with their dogs, mm -hmm. going to a park to go walk their dog because now we have dog parks. Mm -hmm. 
or on their skateboard. So the mom will, dad will walk, the kid will do the skateboard, do the bike alongside. Mm -hmm. So the concept is really cool. So it, it's just, I think it's an evolutionary process of the growth of the park system. I recently got to ride for the first time, I don't know why, but uh, check on trails. Oh. The first time I had never ridden it. Yes. And, uh, I was really amazed. I was very pleased with those trails. They're very yeah. nice. You go, from, you? you go from park to park. Um, <coughs> it's, they're nice. It's shaded. Yes. Very nice. It's a surprise, yeah, isn't so it? Yes, I really enjoy it. I agree with you. There's a lot of parks that are connected and we don't even yeah. know. What That's mm -hmm. one of the concepts that was created, I guess, within the last seven to ten years, yeah. doing linear parks. Mm -hmm. And I, I come some of the concepts <coughs> were doing it from um, the River Vega property, remember the discussion about that years ago, and that was one of the, the concepts of doing it, and then doing it straight down the city, which is, <coughs> and so I think it's cool, it starts at Eastwoods, mm -hmm. so it, it's really neat, but it, it's neat when you can create, because you've got pockets of land, mm -hmm. you can just make them that much bigger if you just, <laughs> and so you've got part, part, <coughs> and then the, the access too, so. I think it's neat. You know, kids don't have to ride around in circles anymore. Mm -hmm. They're going to ride their bikes. They can actually <laughs> go to some <laughs> place. So it's, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's the, the concept. So basically, a lifetime of discovery. Get outside and enjoy your parks. Learn about them. Fourth of July, we had three events throughout the city. We had two of them uh, on July 4th. And then we had one on Saturday the 7th. These, this was at Independence. Uh, I want to say there was just under a thousand people. That's one of your um, reg regional parks. It was a fun event. It was a hot day. People were getting dunked. <laughs> <laughs> Does the city own all those balloons or all those meant to, like those uh, big water slides? No, we do not own them. Okay. They yeah. are, they, some of them were donated for the day. Mm -hmm. uh, council members will have. Uh, sponsors and they'll give them to us uh, but there's a new compliance ordinance that's going out but these are actually amusement rights so that's gonna you're gonna see less of these uh, may not maybe not less of these, but they're all gonna be in compliance now what does that mean as an amusement ride what would how would that affect it insurance requirements and mm -hmm. compliance that the actual ride uh, activity has to be in compliance it has to be safe and so like your toys you know they've been tested and no oh. this is not this is not acceptable or yes this is and so how they're made and, and materials that are used so yeah which is good um, I don't have the picture on it. I know I think Chris I saw one on yours but um, the other one we had was that Unitrade uh, oh, yes. um, yeah, the PowerPoint. <laughs> We're going to be going back and forth. Oh, yes. Richard, can you I'm go to the other one, please? And then come back to this. Richard, sorry. That one? That's Unitrade. That was a blast. Uh, beautiful day. Uh, started off with a cook off early in the morning. And good food, smell delicious. Mm. Um, then we had some games in the afternoon. We started off these, uh, the game itself, with a um, um, flag ceremony. Mm -hmm. And that was interesting. The huge BBVA compass loaned us a flag. And we had about just under 100 volunteers. No Sorry. practice. Actually walked it on the field and then opened it up on the field. Cool. Yep, didn't touch the ground. We had people underneath. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. And then we had the fireworks. The, the cooking so contest, you signed up prior to that? or Yes. That work? Yes. Uh, the city wasn't handling it. That was uh, being handled by... Uh, Tecolotes took lead in, in some areas mm -hmm. and then they sponsored the, the, another organization to do that. So that was fun. Um, so. We don't have another baseball team playing there, right? It's just the Tecolotes that play at Unitrade. We rent it out. 
We have a, in the ordinance, oh. there is a, a section that allows for rental of facilities. Okay. Like we rent our pools, our pavilions, mm -hmm. our rec centers. Unitrade has been incorporated and now has a user fee. Okay. But we don't have a team like the lemurs anymore. No, 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 okay, no, okay. no, no. We'll have area schools or okay. tell you want to use it for championships or whatever because they'll have to pay the rent for it. Mm -hmm. Do you have another one, Unitrade? No, that was independence. independence. And then mm -hmm. more on the fishing derby, movies in the park, and car and court. Okay, now go to the other one. Okay. In your calendar, you'll see some of the the dates. These are actually the flyers that have already been created for events in the park. If you've never had the opportunity to go to movies in the park, it's kind of cool. Yes. It's there's something unique about watching a movie outside. I I, I can't explain it. Um, but it's 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 a neat experience, and you can take your kids. Um, people do picnic baskets. We have free popcorn and buzz and <laughs> waters and stuff, but it, it's cool. If it's a breezy night, ideal. So, Coco has been a favorite for, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to have to. Great. No. You haven't seen it yet, have you've managed to see it. I don't know how, wow. yes. It's in Netflix, you can watch it. Okay. Yeah. Is that I will. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Awesome. I'll wow. have to do that. Try to see it. <laughs> Hillside is doing an open house. Uh, there is one thing that I, I'd, I'll bring up in, in a discussion, but um, are you, go back. go back. No, 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 you're fine. Hillside is doing an open house at one of our rec recreation centers <coughs> on uh, McPherson Street and Wyoming. And we're doing a, an open house in, in honor of July month. And so they're going to have a lot of activities. It's kind of like a sampling, if you will, mm -hmm. of several of our activities that we offer at that rec center. And they'll be using inside and outside. And there'll be many activities. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to have a whole hour long. Uh, it'll be an abbreviated form of the activity. But it's an opportunity for people to stop by and get a big sampling of a lot of the activities we do. Um, OK. <coughs> movies in the pool. This is uh, Councilman uh, Mayor Pro Tem. I'm sorry, uh, Charlie San Miguel has his in the pool because it's available and it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hot outside. It's summer. Uh, and if you think just watching a movie outside <laughs> in the yard is fun, <laughs> yeah. this is yeah. That's pretty amazing. I loved the concept when uh, he brought it to us a few years ago, and it's yeah, definitely something we've we've repeated. Uh, calendar for Tecolotes de los Dos Laredos. Uh, they've already had their June break, and so they start again. Uh, they were off for a month. Uh, they started again uh, right before July fourth. They were in Monclova. They played two days, um, two days in Monclova. They came here specifically for July 4th, and then they went right back to play the end of the series. And so August, September, October. So that just gives you a little bit of the. W which ones were the games? Things. Do you know? Um, I believe the red ones are the ones scheduled in No Uh. Yes, it says Fuego de Mexico. Yes, it's. Yeah, uh, some of the visiting teams didn't want to come over, right? Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Is, there, is there a change of plans to that and them having to play here instead? They might play this. I mean. Oh, the teams didn't want to go to New Level right yeah. now? Yeah, uh, ongoing violence that mm -hmm. have been uh, going on. I think the one that was supposed to happen yesterday was, was canceled. Yesterday. They canceled. And today they're going to play two here. Yeah. That's why I believe. That's why I heard that they were going to play the games on this side. Since we don't have the lemurs and we are renting the stadium out, is the stadium making more money? I've heard the Tecolotes are really, like, they bring a ton of people. <coughs> uh, there's a lot more revenue coming in. The stadium hasn't been this full. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say that because I'm not sure, actually, you know, based on, mm -hmm. but 
everybody that I've spoken with has not seen this much success. With Every team you go to, I mean, it's, it's pretty much sold that's, out. That's, that's what yeah. I've heard. I mean, mm -hmm. which is surprising. I mean, in the middle of the afternoon. Well, you'd be surprised, but a lot of people are from Norway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, because yes, the they are. Is, they're basically major league for Mexico. It's a, yeah, it's a or it's major, part of them. It's, it's a, a major league. league in it's a major league, league right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's a major league team. So is the stadium now like self-sustaining? That's a good question. Uh, I think any facility of this magnitude, it takes several years for it to be self-sustaining. I know that they do that. It's one of their focuses on uh, in other cities, recreation centers. They'll build seven to ten million dollar recreation center that is. 50, 60, 70,000 square feet. It has a, a huge ballroom inside. It's got like an indoor outside aquatic facility. It's got your gyms and your rooms and such. Kind of real similar to the last three that we've built here, mm -hmm. just a little bit larger. Uh, but the concept over there is for them to be self-sustaining within three to 10 years. Oh, wow. And so it just depends on, on the, the size of the facility. And it's, it's your demographics. Mm -hmm. That's not the way, um, the citizens of Laredo and this community are, are, are focused on. That, that's not our direction. Our direction is to provide a service and to enhance quality of life. It's what the city offers to its mm -hmm. community. And so in other cities, larger, they're expected <coughs> to be self-sustaining. Okay. And so their, their um, membership, $800, $1,000. Uh, family member, uh, for family, it'll be fifteen hundred dollars for the year, okay. and so yeah, considerably more. Our membership for a year is fifty dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and in those situations, it, it is meant to be self-sustaining. Okay. You're in a trade. You've got a large facility. You've got a, a, electricity, your water, um, mm -hmm. and so maintenance, upkeep. Yeah. No, I just I've just heard they're no, super super popular. Amazing. So I've been wondering. Amazing. But you know, I think the concept more is that more Laredoans are enjoying mm -hmm. your outdoors, mm -hmm. your fun, you're, you're watching your favorite team mm -hmm. uh, hopefully win. And so it's definitely enhancing the quality of life mm -hmm. for a lot of people. It's an affordable activity. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so I think that's more the, the focus. But definitely the fact that you see this place so full uh, every time they're playing, it, it's, it's, yeah, really cool. it's heartwarming. Yeah. We have the third summer program. We're already two thirds into the <laughs> summer program. Sure. We've got, uh, we've already had over 1,200 kids go through our program. So, a lot of kids. Uh, we're still offering free tennis at the market tennis courts, free tennis classes. Those are doing really well um, from 7 to 8 on Mondays uh, in the evening. Uh, we're trying to make, make them more accessible in the cooler times of the evening. And so good people work. <laughs> Pony World Series, as Katie spoke about, starts next week. Next Tuesday is the uh, opening. And it is from the 17th through the 21st. And she's hit it right on the, on the head. Uh, parks crews have been all over the place getting these parks getting ready. Uh, I mean, there's building up her mounds, tearing them down, extending the sizes of the fields, uh, wow. bringing them in. We've got six, eight, 10, 12 U, you know, uh, and up. So there, we had to make some minor adjustments. They decided not to use an unhead field because they had 17, 18 teams, and that's too many teams to handle in that area mm -hmm. with the parking. <coughs> and so they decided to move it to the base, so we incorporated one additional field at the base, so we're now using an addition field number eight. So it's just, it's crazy. It's, it's very, very busy. And that's in addition to all these things that we're doing. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> so the, the <laughs> baseball field, field, those are all going to be permanent changes then to the baseball fields? Those will be no, oh, they can be modified. Oh, okay. It's not very difficult to modify uh, 
uh, it's not impossible mm -hmm. to modify a field, whether, you know, if you're going to change it up or change it down. Oh. You just need to make okay. sure the fence line is, la is out, is out mm. distance enough. Okay. But you can bring in the field itself. You can bring in a temporary fence if you need to do, and you can just remark whatever. Okay. And we've got the calendar, movies in the park. <coughs> What's the rule for movies in the park? Is it only PG or PG-13? Or, I mean, what, is there a rule? It's, yes. Uh, we, when we've done it, I've, and I've never seen the movie, we look on, on um, what is it? Swank Motion Picture? Or we get them from Swank Motion Picture because we've got to pay for the license. Mm -hmm. And depending on the movie, how, how recent it is will depend on what the license fee is. But there's actually a website that IB something MB gives you the description of movie and it tells you exactly like PG or, or up to what extent mm. and why yeah, it is what it's rated, okay. it's what rated. scenes or what it, what is in there that rates it like that, and so we're cautious to make sure and the councilmen are very aware okay. and, and they choose movies that are very family oriented. We've never had an issue where. We've had to go back and say, are you sure you want to do this? You know, <laughs> it may not be appropriate. No, they all sound really family friendly. Good. I was just yes. curious. Yes, we do. Um, we do that in the rec centers as well. Mm -hmm. I know that when people work out, they would rather listen to their own music. And they've got rap songs that are pretty upbeat mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. hyper. And uh, I just require that it be the friendly version, mm -hmm. which bleeps out. Right. Right. You know, whatever. Some of the music has a good beat, good workout beat, so you just don't want to hear the word. word right. Right. So, <laughs> right. yeah, same rules. And just okay. to make sure it's funny for everybody. And uh, freedom of, what is it, freedom of rights. We all have our rights. Mm -hmm. um, as long as your right to do what you're doing doesn't impede on my right to not have it done. Mm -hmm. So, cool. Yeah, we make it universal. Excellent. I want to commend you all. I, like mm -hmm. always, I mean, you all are doing an excellent job. And it's just growing and growing, like you said, on a daily basis. And, and I think people are are enjoying a lot of our parks. You know, like, I don't think we've had this in a while. You know, the way I think it's, it's only going to get better. I agree. I, I see a lot of people at the parks. I live across the street from yeah. them, and I see it. I, I, I live right across the street from Ryan Elementary, and it's, there's always somebody there at any time. Yes. It's, it's a and it's cool to see. On those parks that have barbecue pits, like for example the one in Del Mar, who has access to using the barbecue pit? First come, first serve, or do they have to rent them, or how does that work? That's under the pavilion. Correct. Correct. It's under the pavilion, and it's under a rental. It's under. It's rented by ordinance. And so you have to, uh, here's what has happened before, because I, I sense the question. Um, say Mary has gone to the parks department, has rented the pavilion, because she's having a birthday party. And Paul decides he wants it's empty. He's going to go barbecue. Well, in the middle of Paul's barbecue, Mary's going to show up with her permit have the cops go and have Paul leave. So you don't want to do that. Mm, so you would call the cops? Yes. You wouldn't call the Parks Department? The parks Department would call the cops. There's a number on the bottom of the form, and so if you have any issues, you'd call that, and that person would call Parks Police. Yeah. We have a Parks okay, Police. Okay, They're friendly. You're right, that's in, in the pavilion, but isn't there like a table, like a picnic table outside the pavilion, like close to where there's that small baseball field? Yeah, it's on the opposite yes. side. Uh -huh. There is. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so those are first come, first serve. Oh, okay. And there's no barbecue pit on there? No? I don't think so. Oh, it's only it's tables, right? Yeah, it's yeah. So those would be first come, first serve. Just wondering. Because yeah. mm -hmm. my grandson was here with me um, two weekends ago, and I took him in the evening to the park, and uh, I it was around 7, it was still kind of hot, but then around 7.38, you started seeing all these people getting in there, like, with their kids. And mm -hmm. it was a very nice evening. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that hot after 8. But, yes, people are enjoying the parks. 
It's really neat yeah. to see. And that both uh, the pavilion was not being used, but that picnic table was being used. So, but I didn't know if you had to rent it or if it was just open to the public on a first come first serve. No, not the one that's that's not enclosed. Okay. Is there a way if you show up at the park and you see that it's not being used that you can call through and want and say, "Is this being used? Can I rent it?" Or it has to be done like a couple days in it's advance. It's normally 14 days what they ask you. Oh. To, so you can rent it. Sometimes okay. we'll do it a week because we don't have anything and we'll be able to rent it. It's 150 to, um, for the rental and fifty dollars deposit. Okay, but I guess what she's asking is, let's say it's a, a weekend and you and if you want to use I it know. and it's I not being abate. I mean, if it's not being used, she wants to know. Yeah, just like to check, like call through and want to say, hey, there's this pavilion, it's not open. Can I rent it? I but isn't it they enclosed? Say, They're it's enclosed. enclosed, and the reason oh. she's saying that we need uh, a few days advance notice is open. so that we can have it on the calendar for the weekend guy, uh, we, uh, employee, so that he can make the rounds and okay. go oh. unlock it okay. to ensure that it's and make sure it's clean. You know, they'll they'll make sure it's picked up and what have you, so that it's okay. ready for the event. <clears throat> Okay, any items for next meeting? I was wondering if I could have an update for the indoor pool. If there are any updates to report on that. I'm super excited about that project. And I just am really, really curious how it's going. Okay. Where is where is that the indoor? By the sack, right? Isn't it up on, isn't it by the sack? That was the original plan. Oh, so there's updates. So that's not going to be there anymore? No, no, no. That was the original oh, okay. concept is okay. to, because originally it was supposed to be a joint project. Right. Right. Has that changed? Uh, yes. get you an update. Wow. <laughs> okay. Been looking forward to next month. <laughs> yes. I will give you a timeline. Um, where that project is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would like to make a clarification. Uh, can I have you? Of course. Uh, on July the 17th, team, is the um, <coughs> Dr. San Sandra Leyendecker um, Dog Park uh, unveiling. I'm not the <coughs> one No. I, I, uh, I'm confused. The 20th. Is there a um, ribbon cutting ceremony for the Tres Laredo Park? It's here in your um, calendar. That's on what date? On the 17th instead of the 20th? Uh -huh. right. The okay. 17th is the uh, unveiling of the uh, Sandra, Dr. Sandra uh, Leyendecker okay. Dog Park. And um, on Friday, the 20th, is the ribbon cutting ceremony for the renaming of the Tres Laredos Park. Okay. I knew it was something on that day. But you're gonna get your invitations by email. I have a question about the groundbreakings. One of the reasons I'm hesitant to go is because I'd be taking my kids. Are these, are they, for parks, are they generally just kind of informal affairs and anybody can go? Or would it be weird to have my kids with me? No, That's kind of why I've been hesitant. No, not at all. <coughs> it's a, it's an event to introduce the newest uh, project okay. uh, to the community, and so the community is invited. Okay. People who have been involved in the process are invited, and so it, it, anything that we do is always open to the public okay. when we're talking about something like this, because it is for the public. It's okay. theirs. Hours. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's not just, you know, 10 guys in suits. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. We prefer a larger crowd. Okay, any other items for the next meeting? I do one. <laughs> this is free. And this is it. Um, what's the latest with the updates for the website? Is you. It's an ongoing project, I know. It is an ongoing project. We're working on two um, websites. No websites. Two. We're working on two projects at the same time. One mm -hmm. of them is 
um, inventory and maintenance software. Oh. And so that has taken a priority okay. to the website. The website is being kept up. Uh, we have our communications division who is overseeing that for us right now. And so we're sending her all the information. So she's okay. keeping the information updated. But the inventory and, and maintenance uh, software or program is kind of taking a higher priority. It, it's uh, very right. long overdue. And so we've had a couple of conference calls. Uh, we've met with various division heads and uh, people who are going to actually be using this. Okay. And it's going to be an awesome system. So we're just waiting. We've had some conversations back and forth. We just had one with him this morning. Uh, the conference called again at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And he's inquiring. He needs more information to be able to, to put the whole package together for us on a, on a final quote. But it's going to be really neat. It's, um, but is that just for the Parks Department or is that for other departments? It's just for the Parks Department. Okay. We're, we're getting it for ourselves. You know, we've got equipment. It'll be able to tell you um, you have 50 of these in your warehouse. Uh, it'll be able to tell you at the end of the month, okay, this one went here, this one went there, oh, wow. and this one went there. Okay. And so you look at a project and it'll give you, you key in your project and it'll tell you every single piece of equipment that went into that that project and so um, and maintenance as well you know um, you happen to be sweeping or, or mowing one of the fields yeah. and you notice that a bench is broken then right then and there you've got your your phone or whatever device that we're going to be implementing and you can at the, at the end of the day just key in bench is broken and take a picture of it it uploads mm -hmm. and you just created a job order a work order Cool. So, yeah, it's kind of like bringing us back and that kind of, because the website is actually <coughs> current, mm -hmm. uh, we decided that this was more of a priority uh, It help the department and, and just so offer like a, so many benefits. So like a bench at a park, would it have a barcode on it then or a serial No, number? it doesn't. It, it, it okay. would not. That's why the employee would take a picture and uh, just do a work order. Okay. And so the employee who's, let's say he's cutting the grass, he doesn't have the tools mm -hmm. to be able to do that. It would be uploaded and it would probably go to construction. Okay. You know, this is a work order for construction. Construction needs to put it on their list of stuff to do. So all of this stuff is just happening, you know, uh, as, as it occurs. And so that's one of the neatest things when I started looking into this software uh, a while ago. I just thought that was, that was amazing. That is you know, kind of like everybody getting together do, to do the same job because uh, she can't be everywhere. And, yeah. you know, the supervisors can't be everywhere. And so it, ju it just provides more eyes in, yeah. into our park systems. So, that's awesome. Yeah. So that, that has, has moved up to the top. Uh, Understandable. But, Yes. <laughs> it's going to be a bigger of an asset for the tool for the department, but we are still going to be doing the other. It's just I'm trying to get this out first. Great. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Mr. Romo? Second. 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 I know. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you.